Hi everybody, it's Harvard Lawyer Lee. Are Todd and Julie Chrisley, the mom and dad from a family-friendly reality TV show, a danger to the community? In a recent pleading filed with a court in the Northern District of Georgia, government attorneys argued that the Chrisleys are in fact a danger to the community, or at least that they can't prove that they're not a danger. The government had good legal arguments about why the Chrisleys should not get bond during their appeal. I've covered that in another video that I'll link at the end of this one. But this argument that the Chrisleys might be a danger to the community, one of the reasons the government argued is very sensational. The government argued that Todd tried to extort his own daughter by threatening to release a sex tape she made. I'll get into all of that. Last summer, Todd and Julie Chrisley were convicted of bank fraud and tax evasion. Todd was sentenced to 12 years in federal prison. Julie was sentenced to seven years. They report to prison next week on January 17th, 2023. In late December, the Chrisleys filed a motion for bond pending appeal. In other words, they told the court they're appealing and they want to stay out of prison on bond until the appeal is over. In order to get bond, the Chrisleys have to show that they do not pose a danger to any other person or the community. Now, I would have thought that was just a gimme. Just how dangerous could the Chrisleys possibly be? I would have thought the government would focus on the question, the legal question of the appeal and whether it was going to justify them getting a bond. And don't get me wrong, the government did talk about that. But the, at the end of the government's brief, they went straight for the jugular saying the Chrisleys have to demonstrate they're not a danger to the community and they can't do that. The government said the Chrisleys have demonstrated throughout these proceedings that they think they are above the law and then gave four specific examples of what the government called obstructive conduct. Number one, the government said both Chrisleys caused a sham backdated corporate resolution to be transmitted to the grand jury investigating them. In other words, the government said that they faked documents that they sent to the grand jury. It obviously didn't work. They were indicted and now they've been convicted. Now, number two, the government said both Chrisley's suborned the perjury of their former employee, Donna Cash, who repeatedly falsely testified at trial and directly contradicted a recorded statement she had given to the defense team. So the government's saying that the Chrisleys convinced their former employee to give false testimony at trial, knowing perfectly well that the testimony was false because the employee had already told the Chrisleys defense counsel something different. Number three, the government argued both Chrisleys suborned the perjury of Todd's mother, Faye Chrisley, who falsely testified about a key incident at a Bank of America branch. Now this one hits hard. Everybody loves Nanny Faye from the TV show. What the government is talking about here is that the government says that as soon as it started poking around the Chrisley's finances, the Chrisley's quick transferred the ownership of their Seven Seas production company to Todd's mother. And then they undid that transfer, transferred it back out of Nanny Faye's name later. The government is saying they convinced Nanny Faye to testify falsely about these changes of ownership. But most sensationally of all, the government says that Todd and Julie Chrisley are a danger to the community because, and this is the fourth reason they listed, Todd Chrisley threatened, intimidated, and unlawfully influenced his daughter, Lindsay Chrisley, with the threatened release of a supposed sex tape of her. Now, this is not something the government pulled out of thin air. Lindsay went on Dr. Phil and told the world that Todd met with her when he was going to be indicted and accused her of meeting secretly with someone connected to the government investigation against him and feeding the government information. She says her dad, Todd, told her that she had better be careful because her brother, Chase, had incriminating evidence about her, nude photos, and also had paid $5,000 for a sex tape of her, and then it wouldn't end well for Lindsay if she worked against Todd. Lindsay said that Todd threatened to release the information. She even filed a police report with the Cherokee County Police in Georgia 
on July 16, 2019. The report says Lindsay stated her father and stepbrother wanted her to lie about an incident, and if she refused to do so, they were going to release the sex tape involving her. I, meaning the officer, asked Lindsay if there was, in fact, a sex tape in existence for her to be concerned about, and Lindsay stated that it was possible. At trial, though, Lindsay claimed there was no sex tape and that she does not believe her father was the one doing the extortion. After those four points, the government piled on a few extras that weren't in the main list. They said that the Chrisleys had lied to a prior judge about Todd's role in Seven Seas Productions and not knowing where the company banked. The government also said that two individuals had just reached out to the government in recent weeks to claim that the Chrisleys were continuing to commit crimes while on bond. One person claimed the Chrisleys took money but then failed to deliver a subscription box. And the other was already in the middle of a lawsuit against the Chrisleys and said Todd Chrisley could victimize her more or more easily if he was out on bond than if he was sitting in prison. The Chrisleys responded by saying, if the government really thought we were a danger to the community, the government wouldn't have let us wait around from November sentencing to our January 17th prison report date. And at the time of sentencing, the court itself pointed out that it was not aware of the Chrisley's threatening witnesses and said that Lindsay's trial testimony was very different from what the government quoted her as saying before. And the court pointed out that the entire matter with Lindsay was a family matter, not a matter of being a danger to the community. As for the missing box, the Chrisleys say they contracted with a company called Fanbox to send boxes to fans, and Fanbox went bankrupt. They have no control over the company or the fact that it went bankrupt, they say, and in fact, they're listed as creditors in Fanbox's bankruptcy. So tell me in the comments below, what do you think? Are the Chrisleys a danger to the community? The question of whether they should have gotten bond legally speaking, is different. I dealt with that in a separate video, which I'll link at the end, but are they a danger to the community? Be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you back for more legal news.